Hello, welcome to the woods. And if you're one of my new subscribers, and there's quite a few of you, I think we turned about 12,000 last night. Welcome to Greencraft. If you're one of the old sweats that's been with me for a long time, then welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> I hope you're gonna enjoy what's coming up. Now, a few months back, I started a series of videos that were all inspired by the late Morse Kahansky. We had the butterfly hank, we had the survival belt saw, we've had the super shelter, we've had the Mora classic number one, and we also had the Roycraft pack frame. And in that video, I promised that I would do a loadout video of what you would load onto a Roycraft pack frame. And here it is, I'm gonna go through what I've got in here so that you can have a go at this too. Now the loadout gear that I'm carrying is based on this environment, a woodland environment in the spring. So it's got gear in there which will cover me for a range of temperatures. Recently it's been fairly warm during the day but it's been quite cold at night so it's been below freezing at night and it's crept up to 10 degrees or so during the day it's not that today it's considerably colder but again last night it was down below freezing so what i've got in here will cover me for this environment in these weather conditions so when you're using the roycraft pack frame before you put your load out together the first thing you need to do is think through what you're going to need and when you're going to need it because what you find with this is this is a, a sealed parcel. And what I've done with mine is everything that I'm going to use in base camp and at night is in here. The stuff that I'm going to need to get to through the day, well, if it's in here, it's very difficult to get to because I've got to unpack it and unwrap to get to one item, which if it's something like trail snacks or a first aid kit or just a water bottle, that makes for quite a lot of inconvenience. So what I've done is I've used my little guide haversack to contain those items. So I'll take you through what I've got in here first. So this is worn over my shoulder and it's slung to my side. And if I need it through the day, I can swing it round so it's in front of me. When I open it up, I've got my main compartment in the back and I've got some pockets on the front. In here, over on this side, I have my first aid kit, something I might need during the day and if I do need it, chances are I need it in a hurry. So that's close at hand. I've also got my little foobar headband and that can be used with my torch in the evening so I've got hands-free lighting but it also makes my emergency tourniquet. Next to that, well, I've got a pruning saw. Useful for on the trail, for gathering firewood and resources. Also in the front here, I've got some water items. And the first one of those is this. And it's a Sawyer mini filter so I can purify water as I go if I need it. I've also got in here one of my little Parasilk filtration bags and that's so I can pre-filter the water before I put it through this. That makes this last that little bit longer. Going into the main compartment, well, water in a stainless steel bottle so that I can boil it if I need to. This is a 500 milliliter one, and I can top this up from my other bottle if I need to, or from water sources along the way. Also in here, I've got my poncho, USGI type poncho. Those of you who are regular to the channel, you've seen this lots of times. The great thing with these is, is they're part of my shelter, but I can also throw it on over me and the Roycraft pack, and it keeps me and my gear dry. I've also got some snack items, some foods that I can carry with me along the way, quite high energy foods, simple items that will keep me going through the day. 
I've also got some pegs and a set of jungle toggles and these with my poncho means when I stop I can get my shelter up if it's raining and that way I can open the main pack in the dry under the shelter so my gear is not getting wet and then lastly in the bottom I've got a two litre water bag and that and this connect together so I can pre-filter the water using my filtration bag into here and then to purify it and make it safe to drink I can screw this onto there and I can drink directly from the bag if I need to or I can squeeze it into this bottle as a refill so the first thing we'll look at is the frame itself obviously last time you saw it it had the three sticks tied together and the actual shoulder harness is just made out of one of my survival scarves very simple very comfortable and obviously this can be used as my sleeping bag liner it can be used as a browse bag it can be used in all manner of ways so it's simple and functional i've also attached five paracord loops one two three four and one up on the other side five and when I packed my haversack, I took two of my jungle toggles out and I've just threaded those through. So I've got one at the bottom and I've got one over on the side here. And that, having those pre-threaded just makes it a little bit easier when it comes to actually packing it. And what I find really useful is when I'm planning the trip out and I'm planning the gear I'm going to take is on my list I put headings so I have shelter warmth water and food so everything in here that I've packed fits into those categories now the rule of threes tells us that the human body will last three hours without shelter so shelter is fairly important so we'll look at that first so my first shelter element is this and this, for those who don't recognise it, is my super shelter kit. This, combined with my waterproof poncho that's in my haversack, makes a very good, effective shelter. It creates a temperature bubble around the user. It's lightweight to carry and simple to use. Effectively, it's like a little greenhouse, but it replaces the sun with the warmth of your fire. Excellent bit of kit. Pop back in my videos and it will show you how to do one of these. I've also got this, this is my Wooby, my US Army poncho liner. This is the one that I converted so it can be an under quilt for your hammock, it can be a sleeping bag, uh, you can unzip uh, the neck opening in the middle so you can wear it as a, uh, a bit of warm kit. So a good, versatile and lightweight, fast drying bit of kit. Next up, inside my super shelter, I want to help maximize the heat retention and this is one of those little reflective windscreen protectors very cheap very lightweight very compact and this lays down on the floor inside the super shelter to help create that little heat bubble this is a little inflatable air mattress now traditionally more said that we would make a pine bow bed a raised bed inside our super shelter well I'm in Woodland where there's no pine I could make a browse bed using my mini moors scarf I could pack that full but this time of year there's not a whole lot of vegetation that I can pack that with so I've got this little inflatable air mattress it's light it's compact and it's comfy and obviously last up is this the ground sheet that big sheet of green that everything was wrapped in on my Roycroft pack frame it's actually my ground sheet and that will go on the ground when I put my shelter up so that I've got protection from the dampness of the ground so obviously the next heading is warmth my shelter will give me a degree of warmth my poncho liner will give me some warmth but I'm also going to want to get a fire going outside so I'm going to need my fire kit 
well, that I carry on me anyway. That's why it's got a neck cord that's worn inside my smock. Again, if you're not sure what's in here, go back into my videos and you will find a complete guide to what is in this little pouch. So that is number one. But I'm also gonna need some extra clothing, particularly if my clothing perhaps got wet during the day. And it might not be from the rain. It might just be that I've been working hard sweating at night time. I wanna put something dry on as well. So what I have is a complete change of lightweight clothing. So some long johns, a thermal top, and a little parachute nylon suit. <coughs> and that's all stowed in here in a little dry bag to make sure it doesn't get wet. I've also got an extra lightweight merino wool layer and a cheapo carry more, very lightweight, very compact down jacket. And then in my pockets, obviously my woolly hat. I don't go anywhere without this one. So my next two headings, water and food, but they're kind of connected in this case. So I've got my water bottle, one liter stainless steel. I've also got my TBS billy can cup, which is my main cooking pot. Obviously in my haversack, I've also got the ability to carry more water and to process water as I need it. So this is my mainstay for water. I've also got my little mess burner stove and fuel kit along with my spoon. I've got my food bag. So I've got food for a couple of nights in there. My tea bags. Can't go anywhere without tea. And then my little mini wanigan. So I've got my herb spices, etc. in there. <coughs> this is also my chopping board and this is a mixing bowl come eating pot come cooking container come everything if you want more details on this all these again go back into my videos there's full details of the mini wanigan and how to make your own little mess stove Now there's a few other bits and pieces that I carry that don't fit into those four categories and those are mostly tools of some description. So I have a small flashlight, or torch, and this is a little Olight i5T, great little bit of kit, AA batteries, simple, powerful, not a whole lot to go wrong. I've then also got because I'm not wearing my ED, normal EDC pouch. As I'm out in the woods, I've got an open L number eight garden knife. Good, trusty companion. A small whistle and a ferro rod. And then last but not least, this, my little Norland hatchet. Useful for processing firewood, particularly for weather's wet hammering in tent pegs, all manner of different things I can do with this little axe. So the next thing we're gonna look at is how to actually pack all of this lot onto this frame. So the first thing we do, is we're gonna take our ground sheet, and we're gonna lay it out so it covers the frame frame wants to be roughly in the middle. With that done, we're going to fill the space in the center of our frame. And for that, we want some nice soft stuff. So I'm going to take my wool top, <coughs> my down jacket, my spare clothes, and get that all packed in there. Next, I'm going to put my larger items. So I'm going to take my foil screen protector, 
place that on the top. Then take my wooby, place that onto the top there. Then, and start putting on some of these harder items. This lot will provide me with a good layer of comfort between hard angular bits on here and my back as I'm carrying it. So I'll place my axe on. I'm gonna place my water bottle and cooking pot on there as well. My mini wanigan. That all wants to be fairly central. So as you put it on, try to judge if it is just that, if it is in the center. It doesn't want to be more off to one side because that's gonna make it weight very awkwardly on your back. Next up, I'll take my super shelter, pop that onto there as well. My food bag, my brew kit, stove, sleeping pad, and get that all onto there like so. So with everything assembled up there, so with everything in place, what I now need to do is wrap all of that in this. And it needs to be done in a way that if it does rain, that this will stay dry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one edge, and I'm gonna roll it across fairly tightly. Again, I'll check it's still staying nice and central. I'm then going to take the opposite edge I'm going to fold it in a little way now I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it over the top like so. And then with that done, I'm going to take the bottom edge and I'm going to fold that upwards. Like that. And then the top is going to come down over the top. That way, the opening is at the bottom. So that if I do get a shower of rain, it's going to run over the top, but not into the contents of my pack. Fold my edges in, get it nice and tight, and then I'm going to take my jungle toggles that's already attached on one side from the bottom through the loop at the top. I'm going to pull that nice and tight. And I'm going to take it through the other loop that is down the bottom here. And then pull that up again, getting that as tight as I can, and just double checking that the load is still staying central. I'll tie that off. and then I'm going to take the one from the side so I've secured it from the bottom to the top I'm now going to secure it across to the other side That's it. And there it is done. I'm all packed. Shoulder harness in place. 
and I'm ready to go. So that's it on my back. Chuck my haversack on. And we're good to go. So that's it, that's my loadout for the Roycraft pack frame. It's quite a lightweight loadout actually. Obviously there's not a full sleeping bag in there. There is only my little poncho liner. However, because it's in that super shelter, it maximizes all of my body heat. So it helps to save weight that way. I've kept everything else fairly minimal, but at the same time, enough to be sensibly prepared for if things go wrong. There's also a weight saving because actually, I'm not carrying a pack. Everything on here is stuff that I would be carrying anyway. The only three things on there that I won't use are the three sticks that are lashed together to make the frame. The ground sheet and everything else is all stuff that I'm gonna use. In use, uh, it's a surprisingly comfortable pack, considering it is just three sticks. You don't get a particularly sweaty back. The more scarf helps to spread out the load, and the weight is fairly evenly distributed, and it's, it's reasonably comfortable. I've done four miles in this morning, and I'm gonna do four miles back now, and I haven't really experienced any discomfort. It's a very good way comfortable way of carrying a load out for a few days away. Now if you enjoyed this video then remember hit that thumbs up button to say you like it and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel remembering to hit that notifications bell so that you know when I have got new videos coming out and there are going to be a load more coming out there's going to be uh, some more of my tried and tested reviews as well as a few other how-to's and some updates on bits of kit, projects that I made a while ago, because I've had a few people say, well, how did you get on with that? Have you changed it? Have you decided you didn't like it? Well, tune in and find out because there are gonna be some videos about those coming up very, very soon. There's also, if you look down in the description box, there is a link to my Instagram and my Facebook pages. Pop over there show your support for the channel and uh, like me over there as well you can also while you're down in the description box have a look at the link to my Etsy shop pop over to the Etsy shop you find all sorts of things over there including my little green craft patches I think there's a couple of mugs left uh, and there are about to be some of my mini more survival scarves going up as well all good stuff there is also a link to my patreon page you can get more involved with the channel you also get a discount on the gear that's in the shop and you get a heads up early of when this stuff is coming up and what stuff is going to be coming up so it's worth becoming a patron i think that's everything i've been neil until next time stay safe